Sunday is that special time for us to get together and study the Word of God. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning for our presentation of Give Me the Bible. So go get your Bible, sit down, and let's study together from the pages of God's eternal Word right here on Give Me the Bible. You know, we've been coming to you right here on this telecast of Give Me the Bible for some time. For over 33 years, we have endeavored to present unto you the wonderful Word of Almighty God. And this morning, we continue to do just that. You know, every one of us go through problems in life. I don't care who we are. Uh, we know that according to the Scripture, those troubles will come. If you were reading the book of Job chapter 14, you would read about a man that went through all kinds of calamities in his life, but he became triumphant over those problems. But he would write in the book of Job 14, 1 and 2 that man who is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. When we read in the book of Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 20 verses 1 through about verse 13, you know, the Bible actually says, God, we don't know exactly where we are and where we're going and how we're going to deal with all the complexities of life. But our eye is on you. You know, we ought to always keep our eye upon God. You and I will face our own Gethsemane. We talk about Christ facing Gethsemane, and he did. And he went to the garden there to pray often. But prior to his impending physical demise, and actually betrayal uh, by Peter, the apostle, and Judas. He went there to pray, and his prayer was, God, not my will, but your will be done in all things. He knew that he was going to be scourged. He knew that he was going to be beaten. He knew that he would be shedding his blood. And by the way, the only time that Christ shed his blood was not upon the cross. He shed his blood on the cross, but he shed his blood when they beat him on the back and ripped flesh from his body. He shed his blood when he was in that garden and pouring out his heart unto God, for it was gr like great drops of blood that would fall from the master's face. Yes, he went through his trials, but we will face our own Gethsemane in life, and we have to turn our face toward God and keep our heart and our lives attuned to the wonderful promises that God has made to deliver us. You know, we've been inviting you for some time now to call us or write us for this DVD entitled Searching for Truth. Uh, this is not of human origin. It actually is based upon the Holy Word of Almighty God. And we'll be happy to send this to you postpaid, free of charge, if you call us at the number that will be appearing today throughout the telecast. We also want to tell you about one other thing that we are offering and have been offering for some time, and that is the Bible Correspondence Course that is available to you upon request. If you'll call that 903 number that uh, continues to appear throughout the program, we'll be happy to get lesson number one to you right away. It is free of charge, and when you complete the course, we give you a certificate acknowledging that you have done just that. So please call us. Uh, someone is standing by even now to take your call. We do thank you for being with us this morning. We're going to call on uh, Jerry Munholland right now to convey unto us and share with us, Jerry, if you will, a little bit more about these problems that we have to face in life. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for, for tuning in this morning also. We're going to go to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, if you would turn your Bibles there, and we read about another instance when the children of Israel were surrounded by another army, and, and they looked at the mass of the army, the Moabites and the Ammonites, and they were saying, Lord, how is it possible that we could have victory in this battle? They are more than us. And so they turned to their king Jehoshaphat and, and had this dilemma, what are we going to do and if you would turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 5 through 13, I'm not, not going to read that at this time, but there is the prayer for deliverance. 
verses 5 through 13. But we are going to read in verse 14, 15 through 17 the, the promise of deliverance. And, and it gets down to it, what is going to make the difference whenever you're surrounded by a host of armies? With, and we'll just say when you're surrounded by difficulties in this life, when it looks like you don't know where to turn, you don't know if there's anywhere to turn, look up. Because this is what the Lord said to them. Verse 15, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And he said, Hearken, all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus said the Lord unto you, Do not be afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Isn't that great advice? The battle is not yours, but the Lord's. How many times have we heard this? The battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Think of David going toward Goliath, and he ran toward him, he said, you come at me with a sword and a shield, but I come in the name of the Lord. Yeah, the battle is not his, but the Lord. I come in the name of the Lord. Whenever we're surrounded by difficulties and turmoils and trials and tribulations, and if they haven't come in your life, just wait, they will be. Remember, the Lord is on your side, and he is ready to fight the battles with you. It's not that we don't fight the battles. Yes, we, we have our battles. David ran toward Goliath. He fought the battle, but gave glory to God and trusted in the Lord, and he gained that victory. Now back to you, Dan. Well, Jerry, thank you so much. You know, one thing we all need to be reminded of every day is God didn't come necessarily to actually take us away from our problems, uh, but sometimes he takes our problems away from us. And sometimes God just comes to get in the big middle of our problems and see us through and to help us get through that. And as a result of that, we ought to be a people that are willing to acknowledge a deep heart of gratitude unto our God. When you read that book of Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verses, uh, the first 13 verses anyway, uh, you understand why it's so important to praise God and thank Him as they did. So we're going to call on our good friend Scout now to share with us some wonderful truths uh, that we find in the Word of God. As we continue in the text in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we want to look at verses 20 through about 23 and notice what they were doing. As they were surrounded by those armies, they began to sing songs of praise to the Lord our God. And with that, and the text reads in verse number 22 that the Lord set an ambush against the people of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who had come against Judah. Praise and thanksgiving stirred the Lord to do great things for his people. We often try to fight these battles, these difficulties alone. And we, we often put God behind us when he should be the one leading us. We should be following him into those battles for he's the one that's going to deliver us. God can give us a new song, a strength for the weary feet, those who will, who will mount up on wings like eagles, if you will. We know that in Ephesians chapter 6, he has given us the opportunity to don on all of the armor of God properly. It reminds me of the song, the, the battle belongs to the Lord, and heavenly armor will enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. It's, it's of no other person that we're going to be able to obtain that victory but through Him. God has equipped us to deal with, with all difficulties, to deal with all of our struggles, with all of our temptations, but we have to put Him first in all that we do. Again, I want you to look at 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Turn your Bibles there with me. And I want to read verse number 20 through 22. So they rose early in the morning and went to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went, let's go ahead and skip down a few verses here to verse number uh, 21. And he consulted and appointed, and he, he said, I want you to sing to the Lord about his praise and the beauty of his holiness. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Not only was this something that stirred the Lord to help them, it was also something that encouraged the people that were doing so. They were those who were singing to God. Have you ever had a, a rough moment in your life and you just, you can't help but, but sing to God it's almost as if we're bursting out in praise to him, understanding that he is the one that's going to deliver us. 
He does today, and he always will, if we are fighting for him, for he's the one leading us into battle. The battle is the Lord's. Take comfort in that. Well, thank you very much, Scout. And, uh, you know, the battle really does belong to God. Uh, but we have been called soldiers of God. But aren't we thankful today that uh, we can call upon our God and that God really helps us? And when we face that moment of Gethsemane, that we know that just as Jesus could do it triumphantly, we can do the same, for he is with us. He left us an example that we should follow in his steps. And sometimes that just embraces the idea that we have to have a change of heart, uh, a change of attitude in our mind about problems. And we're going to ask Chris Groder right now to uh, tell us how we do that, Chris, will you? I'd be glad to, Dan, and thank you all for tuning in this morning and watching Give Me the Bible. Here's what we need to understand is that becoming a New Testament Christian means that we adopt a brand new attitude. And so we learn from James chapter 1 and verse number 2 to consider all the trials and temptations of life to be joy, knowing that it has a benefit of producing patience within us. Furthermore, we look to passages like Philippians 4, 4 through 7 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, and we see emphatically there that we are to rejoice in life situations. Let our gentleness be made known to all men. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Counter anxiety with prayer. Pray without ceasing, or better said, don't quit praying. Uh, give thanks in everything, and that is for every situation in life, because God is going to be able to work a thing, a good thing, through you when we do what God wants us to do. And so there's going to be trials in life. There's going to be lots of things that come our way. Sometimes tragedy is going to strike, like accidents will happen. Sometimes evil befalls us. Sometimes we fall into the path of sinners. Sin actually hurts us and angers us when people lie and cheat and steal and insult us. But sometimes we have our own spiritual failures like Moses did in Numbers chapter 20. When he got so angry with the people of God, when they wanted water, they started complaining, and that complaining got all over him. He was so angry that he struck the rock. God had told him to speak to the rock, and miraculously it would produce water. He'd struck it once before, but in anger, he struck it now. And God said, you did not believe me to obey my voice. You did not hallow me in the eyes of the people. You didn't sanctify me in front of everybody else. And because of that, you will not lead these people over to the promised land of Canaan. Rather, in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 4 through 5, we find out that he died in Mount Nebo, only being able to see by the grace of God the promised land from afar off. We know from Matthew 17, 1 through 5, that he was saved because he appears on the Mount of Transfiguration, but the consequences of his actions was that he didn't get to go to the promised land. How did he deal with that? Well, he repented and he stayed on God's side and he continued to have a good attitude and he got it right with God, and we need to remember that for ourselves as well. Back to you, Dan. Well, Chris, uh, having the right attitude is paramount, isn't it, in our walk with God? Uh, you know, if we have a pristine faith and one that is consistent, we know that God's going to see us through. And we just have to trust His Word and trust God uh, to know that He'll be true to His Word. Now, we're going to ask uh, the Barry Haynes right now to continue our discussion here uh, not only praising God and thanking God, but, but enjoying the wonderful blessings of victory. And God gives us victory. He gave it for us to enjoy. Didn't he, Barry? He most certainly does. You know, when we've been looking at this passage in Chronicles, we see that the people of God are arrayed with God, and in the end, they are blessed because of it. At the end of the battle in verse 25, it tells us that Jehoshaphat and his people went out and took the spoils of war. And it concludes that passage by saying it took three days for them to collect it all. They went through a difficult battle, but God provided a reward for them in the end. You know, I think we need to understand that about God. The Hebrew writer tells us in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, that God is not unjust as to forget our work and the love which you have shown towards his saying and having ministered and is still ministering for the saints. God doesn't forget us. God doesn't uh, provide us with a victory with no reward for it. 
if we remain true and faithful, God will provide a reward. We think about Job. You know, James talks about him as an example in James chapter 5, verse 11. He says, we count it blessed him who endured. You have heard the endurance of Job and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. You know, Job had one of the worst days any human being has ever had. His entire life fell apart. And then his health was taken away from him. But in the end of all those things, because he endures, God gives him back a double portion of what he started with. Now, it could have been that Job would have said, well, that doesn't matter because it was so hard, the battle was so difficult. He could have just wallowed in his pain and misery. And in essence, he would have won the war, but still be stuck on the battlefield. See, many people fall into that mistake today. They don't, when they go through difficult times, they tend to stay in them and they forget that God does bless us and give us more. And I think that's very important that we understand in those times of, of great battle that there is a reward coming. There are, there is a future, there is hope. And instead of staying in that battlefield and staying in those difficult times and never letting it go, we need to open our eyes to see how God is blessing us. You know, sometimes it's through those battles that we really learn to appreciate the blessings of God. We don't recognize how good we have it until we have to suffer a little bit, until the difficult times come. And then when those times pass, we truly can appreciate the spoils that God gives us, the blessings that come our way for those that endure and follow God. Well, Barry, uh, thank you so much for the advice and the words that you have given to us this morning. Uh, we need to enjoy those great blessings of Almighty God. Uh, you know, when I think of all the problems that are going on in the Ukraine right now and, and all of the issues that uh, that country is facing, uh, what appeared to be initially as doom, we believe that God has his hand and things that are going on even there because he controls the world, not just the United States of America, and their reasons for what happens. Uh, when a tyrannical leader like Premier Putin, and by the way, he's anything but Premier, uh, when he goes into another country and tries to devastate everything that they have, what will he have when all of this is said and done? A land mass that has been devastated. But our God is very well aware we're going to call on Perry Cowan, and uh, Perry, continue our discussion this morning, if you will, on this subject found in the book of Second Chronicles 20. Friends, I wonder, have you ever been called upon to uh, struggle with, with life issues, things that happen in life that seem to be so overwhelming that you just couldn't see how you could possibly get through it? Well, if you haven't, and you look out, your turn is probably coming because life happens to all of us. Sometimes we're called upon to fight against what seems to be impossible odds, overwhelming odds, and a battle that's impossible to win. And, and many of those have been mentioned here already this morning, but I wanna, I wanna add one more example uh, to that list because impossible battles are for God's glory. You go back into the book of Judges and recall a story revealed to us in Judges chapter 7 where Gideon was called upon to lead an army of just 300 soldiers to fight against the, the Midianites who had 135,000 soldiers. Now, if that's not overwhelming odds, I, I don't know that I would ever be able to identify overwhelming odds. But God didn't want to have Gideon to have too many soldiers so that uh, they could say, look what we did, but rather very few so that we could say, look at what God has done. It's to bring glory to God. And sometimes we get deceived by the intensity of our battles and forget that God is on our side. It, kind of like uh, Paul wrote in the book of Romans, if God be for us, who can be against us? And we need to remember that through all of the battles, all of the struggles that we're called upon to face. A testimony to the world uh, of God's greatness is found 
in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 um, because it says the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries. Why? When they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. We need to fight the battles that God provides for us to fight and realize that it is for His glory that we're called upon to do those things. Paul said, I know that all things work together for good to those who are uh, love Him and those who have been called according to His purpose. Fight God's battles, give Him the glory. Dan? And Perry, I think that every one of us could say a hearty amen to all of your words there this morning. Now, as we come to our closing segment this morning and this telecast on The Battle Belongs to the Lord, uh, then we want to go to uh, Buddy Ray. And Buddy, I know that according to the Bible, the battle really does belong to God. So if that's the case, the praise belongs to Him, the honor belongs to Him, and shouldn't our focus continue to be upon God who is in heaven, who enters into the affairs of humankind? You're absolutely right, Dan. And as we close our program this morning, as Dan has mentioned, my prayer is that each one of you that have joined in with us this morning through this Bible scripture and through the words that each one of our speakers has given you, that each of you have been encouraged to know that you can look into your Bible, you can turn your eyes to the Lord, and that certainly He will be with us and help us through difficult times. As we close this morning, another great piece of advice is this. Keep trusting in God, whatever happens to you. As a human person, I may not know or always understand what I'm going through in life. I may not know why the burdens are there or what's happening, but I want to assure you of this. No matter what you're going through today, no matter what's happening in your life, God is there before you even get there. Scripture tells us to trust in this. Scripture tells us that God will be there for us. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6, we read these words. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. You see, if I acknowledge God, I acknowledge Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, not through word of mouth only, but also in the way that I live each and every day. If my life is an example to those who have not obeyed the gospel, if I continually turn to Him and walk in the light, as He in the light, it says that He will direct my paths. Another beautiful scripture to leave you with today is this. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6 gives us these words. It says that our Lord Jesus, that He Himself says this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. You see, God's going to be our helper. Our Lord will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will be there for us to see us through these hard times. He will be there to help us with these battles of life. And as Perry said, certainly, we're going to face them. If they haven't already come, they're going to come. Cast your eyes up on the Lord. Turn to Him and allow Him to help you through. As we close today, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 says these words, Mark them in your Bible, write them on your heart, and trust in them. And my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Turn to the Lord, put your trust in Him, walk with Him, and He will direct your paths all the days of your life. Well, buddy, thank you, and thank all of our panelists today for uh, doing an excellent job in the presentation of God's eternal Word. You know, it's not by accident that you're watching this telecast today. We believe that God pointed you to it. There's a reason. You might stop and consider, what is the reason behind all of this? Why did God put it on my heart to not change the channel or move to another channel? But what is it that captivated me today? We hope and pray that it was the Word of God. We hope that you'll continue to watch this program and invite others to join you in the telecast each week uh, right here on this same station. We do want to remind you once again about the DVD that we're offering. It is free of charge, entitled Searching for Truth. Uh, this little DVD will point you to some of the same scriptures that we have shared with you today on this telecast and just simply bring to your remembrance some of the things that, that you heard today that you might have a tendency to forget. We also want to remind you that we're offering a Bible correspondence course now. 
It is free of charge. You may write for it. Uh, you may call for it if that 903 area code, and we'll be happy to send it to you right away and get you started. It is an eight lesson study, and it will point you back to the Old Testament, bring you up through the New Testament, and uh, when you complete that, then we'll give you a certificate uh, stating that you had followed through. We do thank you. We appreciate your love and your support. We appreciate your questions. Uh, your emails that we continue to get from uh, all of you who write us from time to time. It's refreshing to know that many people all over the world are watching this telecast, not only on the affiliates each week, but even by Facebook and uh, by YouTube. And we hope you'll tune in next time, right here on this same channel, for another presentation of Give Me the Bible. Sing the sweetest song of